Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed that panel session. Uh, some really, really good points, and I'm gonna follow that up now with a bit more of an in-depth uh, kind of look at some of those key aspects. Uh, so in case you missed it, uh, I'm Mark Warburton from Ivory Egg. Uh, we're a uh, well, global distributor of, uh, of KNX and building control products. We, we offer a lot of training, we're a training center as well. We've got bases in the UK, Australia, and New Zealand, and from those we can, uh, we can help everybody around the world really with supply of products. In this session, we're going to have a look at the KNX and AV integration. We're going to have a look at some different aspects of KNX building control. We're going to have a look, so look at AV and then discuss how linking them together can create a more unified control of a home or a building. And then we're going to have a quick look at some of the different types of integration between the different systems. So let's get into it. So KNX and building control. When we talk about building control, what do we mean? Right? There's a lot of different services in a building that we can control. Lighting, heating, cooling, ventilation, those are quite common. Things like shading, metering, and monitoring. All of these things are really the infrastructure of the building. They're, they're the things that are kind of hardwired. They're often in a home, well, they're always in a home at some level. It might not be an intelligent control system, but you still have a light switch. You still have a way of controlling the lighting. You still have a way of controlling the cooling, even if it is just opening a window. It could be the heating control. All of these different things exist in a home. And what, we talk, what we're doing when we bring in a control system is enabling simpler control, enabling more intelligent control, enabling all of the different parts of a building to be controlled as one so the building is more uh, responsive to your needs. Um, it could be a really simple example like being able to push a keypad when you push a button when you leave the home and shut down everything in the home to save energy when you're no longer in the property. It could be setting a lighting scene because you've got multiple circuits of light in a room to create a nice ambient environment. Using a scene to recall the different levels whenever you need means that you can have a much nicer living environment. It could be you've got a lot of different circuits and a lot of different functions in the, in the home to control. And instead of controlling each thing individually by going to a keypad on the wall or, or you know, going to multiple points of control on the wall, actually you just want to have one simple uh, keypad or interface that enables you to control everything. Now the key with these types of services is that they're done in a really reliable, stable way. If you're wiring your building in an intelligent uh, if you're wiring your building for controls, you really want to do that with a system that is robust, stable, market proven. And those are all things that KNX offers. It's been around for over 30 years. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of different wiring topologies with KNX, but the main wired topology offers a huge amount of, you know, reliability in this, in the, in the, with the system, given that every device is powered by the bus and it's, it's not reliant on the network, it's not reliant on external systems. That's kind of what I mean by, by KNX and by building control. AV is quite different. AV and AV control, um, audio-visual, that's the stuff that kind of sits, that sits on the surface of the home. It's the things that are more linked to entertainment and how you use a home. Things like having audio in different rooms, being able to have all of the music on throughout your home uh, at the same time. It could be having TVs in different rooms of the home, um, maybe streaming from central sources. Um, it could just be having, you know, over the ear TV or, or TVs with streaming content installed with, with nothing else. But, you know, it's these things that we, we use to kind of relax and enjoy our homes, kind of as opposed to the, the, the requirements to live in a house, I think, I guess. There's lots of other things like dedicated media rooms or home cinemas, where you're you're really focusing on the experience. You want to be able to have an amazing experience, maybe sitting down with the family watching a movie. It takes a lot to create that in a home. Having a dedicated space for that, um, it can be really, really quite an quite an experience. A lot of this requires networking, and it's true that also building control does wire networking. If we're going to install a lot of systems in a home that are going to be, say, streaming, uh, streaming, streaming movies, it might be distributing audio through the home, um, it might be the control layer, all of that relies on the home network. So it's really important that that is considered as part of what AV and AV control is, really. You need that to be a really robust underlying network. And you've got other things like you know, the ability to bring your own device um, where you want to be able to have anybody to come into the home and maybe sit down with the kids to sit down with the phone and they want to be able to stream, you know, um, the latest app, whatever it might be, um, 
Twitch or Snapchat or YouTube or whatever, they want to be able to stream that to the TVs and they need to be able to connect really seamlessly into the system. Could be things like video conferencing or CCTV or access control. Lots of different things that require, um, you know, needs control really. And I think that's the point and the thing to remember. We can have a lot of AV devices in a home and sometimes that's enough. It might be some music streaming and you, you're able to control the, the device natively on your phone. But when we start to build up the AV into a home and we have a lot of different devices such as this list, we need to start thinking about controlling it and potentially centralizing it as well. I've got an image up here of a, of a centralized rack. And that's where you've got everything home, you know, mounted in a, in a central place of the home so that at a, at a kind of interior design level, everything is hidden and discreet and really simple and, and clean lines. Once we get to this level, we need a control system. We need a system that can manage all of the AV. And, and from a user point of view, that becomes our interaction. We interface with the control system and the control system controls all the parts in the home. Now, all of this with AV can be very complicated. There are so many different options, much like KNX and building control. With AV, um, I've got this, this kind of classic picture of, you know, this box full of remotes. If we've got a lot of devices connected to our TV, maybe some um, amplifi amplifier for doing some surround sound, maybe we've got Xbox, maybe we've got an old Blu-ray player, those kind of devices, all of them need control. And that's where the control system can really come into place because it can take all of that and simplify it, um, usually by offering a much more simpler remote that enables you to control all the different um, elements or automatically controls the different elements. But there's a lot more to it now than just a remote. We've got voice control. We've got apps, countless apps to control everything in our home. And again, that's where the AV control system really comes into play because it can simplify that so that when you sit down for a, um, to watch a movie, you don't need to navigate the different systems. You're able to just simply select on, on one app. I want to you know, watch TV in the lounge or watch a movie in the lounge. With AV, there's lots of different levels. It's easy to start with a very simple system. It's easy to install a very simple system. And you can go from there from, from maybe music streaming in one room of your home all the way up to you know, the largest property with, you know, hundreds of TVs potentially, all able to stream content from, from central sources or able to have music throughout the whole home, perhaps when you're having a party. For understanding what the different levels are and, and kind of doing some research as to what the right application is, is a key part of AV. It's not something you want to jump into without really understanding what you're trying to offer. So we've got KNX and we've got building control and we've got the AV system or the AV devices in a property. So why do we talk about integration? What's the benefits of integrating the two systems together? Let's have a little look. So some of the key benefits are the unified control. So if I've got a, maybe I'm using this, this, um, this app or the display or the, the touch screen for my AV control system, and I wanna use that to control everything in the home. I've already got the AV, I've already got the ability to select music or to choose, um, choose sources for a TV or to um, you know, browse cover art on, on albums and things like that. I also wanna be able to control the heating, uh, control the ventilation, control the air conditioning, control the lighting, have that environmental control, but I don't wanna have a separate system for it. It may well be a separate system because the AV is, kind of one aspect of the of the building and, and the devices we have in the building. And the building control is another, right? As we've kind of said, they're often two different systems. And that's good because they both have their own requirements and their own um, their own kind of needs as a system. You want your uh, building control to be really, really reliable and really stable and, and kind of hard right into the building. Whereas your AV, you want it to be able to be, you know, up to date and modern. You know, there's always a new TV, there's always new solutions for streaming audio. That, that changes quite a lot. So you want to be able to change that regularly. So the two are very different, but we want to be able to control them together so that from a user point of view, from the experience point of view, for the people, the customer, the client, the end user living in the home, that they're able to just see it as one system. So they can control everything from that one environment. And that's what the integration allows us to do. It could well be that the AV pre presents that, that GUI, that graphical user interface, that front end, and is controlling the KNX system behind it. But it could go the other way. It could be that the KNX system actually offers you a, 
visualization and, and control of your home. And you're able to control some AV devices from that. That's quite common as well. The point really is that you're not giving the, the customer multiple options. You're trying to bring it together into a single solution. And that's true even if it is if we're talking about a keypad on the wall. When you walk into a room, the, the, the keypad is that primary control point, and that's what we use to control the lighting normally. Maybe we want to control the shading as well. But why would we walk into a room, push a button to turn on the lights, and then get out our, our phone to, to open an app to start the music streaming in the kitchen while you're making your breakfast? might be something you do every single day. I mean, I always put the radio on in the morning. It's the first thing I do when I, well, second thing I do when I walk into the kitchen after turning on the lights. So why not bring that together? Why not make that control from a single point, that keypad on the wall? Why not integrate the two together so it's actually automatic, so that when I press an on scene, maybe it's a scene, a breakfast scene in the morning, that not only does the lighting turn on to the preset level, but the radio automatically starts playing to the volume level I want, because the volume level I want in the morning is very different to the volume level I want uh, in the evening when I'm cooking dinner, for example. So having not just control from a single point, but the ability to link the functions together so that both happen at the same time, for me is what makes a building intelligent. It could be that central off we talked about, the building control. Instead of just shutting down the lighting and the and maybe setting back the heating so that it's ready for when you come home, but it's not using an unnecessary amount of energy. Um, it could be putting the shading into an automatic mode so that um, if there's a lot of solar gain, we don't overheat the house, things like that. So when we do the home, the away button, this home off button, let's make sure all the TVs are off. Let's make sure all the media is turned off and we're not streaming music into any rooms. And we can take that integration further. If we've integrated to the security, we don't even need to push that away button. We can make it automatic. So when the alarm is set, we shut down the building, including the AV and the uh, building control. So we've gone from separate systems, and they could well be separate systems installed. In fact, they generally will be, to having what appears as a single system and a single level of control. I think that's what's really important is that we, we're talking about integrating not just for the sake of it, but to offer the customer a more streamlined control environment in their home. And I think it's important to consider that because we're doing it not for the sake of it. There are reasons to do it, but we've got to consider that we've got to keep it simple. There's no point going into your, your home app and having control of every single device in your home all presented to you. Because then to navigate that becomes a very complicated um, scenario. You've got to know, I want to do this and I want to do this and select all these different buttons. And it can be confusing. It can be too much information. We've really got to go through a design process or a, or a kind of a, a um, consideration process, I guess, where we, we consider what exactly do we need? What is the level of integration between the two systems? How am, how am I going to ensure as an integrator, as a system designer, that the system is fit, fit for purpose, that it's going to improve the lives of the people living in the building or using the building and not make it more complicated just for the sake of it. And it's something that's quite common to see where solutions have been over-engineered. Trying to keep it as simple as possible uh, makes a really big difference to the engagement of the, the end users, the customers with the system. There's another really key point to this as well, though. It's not uncommon for an AV control system to also control lighting, okay? That's quite common. There are quite a few systems that do both. But something where it might not do so much is around HVAC, the heating, the ventilation, and air conditioning. And what having these two systems that can communicate and link to each other actually gives us is the ability to drop into each system and take the thing we need from it. It might be that I'm an AV integrator and I've always used a certain solution and I do the lighting control and I've got the shading and all of that is handled on the AV system, but it doesn't offer HVAC. Well, then I can use just one component of the KNX system or just one of the features or the, the, the elements of the home that KNX control. I can add, use that to introduce that HVAC control into my company's offering. It could be I work with KNX and I do all the building control in someone's home and I want to be able to add a little bit more functionality around AV control. I'm able to bring in from each of the different systems the things I need 
to suit my business and my offering to the customers. And I think that's the really key part, is this enables you as a business to be able to support customers better, increase your offering, and ultimately move to um, a, a position where you're able to make more profit out of the job, where you're able to be more successful in the industry. But we're not just doing it for profit, remember, we're doing it to make the people's lives better who live in these homes. And, and that's what I think we will need to remember. So, just moving on and taking a little bit look at how we can integrate different systems together. So I've got two examples here of, of, um, um, of visualizations and solutions that enable you to control AV devices. Now these are both kind of native KNX devices. The one on the left is the Gear X1, which is a visualization server for KNX. It does all does adds logic, uh, adds um, a, you know an app so you can control your scenes, so you can um, simply control your temperature in the home, and it's it still sits on the bus. It's in a native KNX device, but it enables you to integrate to audio control solutions. In this example, Sonos. So you've got a Sonos and system installed. It might be a multi-zone system with you know, um, speakers, amplifiers in different rooms of the home. And very easy to point the KNX control system, the X1 in this case, at the Sonos, just via the network, point the two together. And then from the X1 app, you're able to control what you want to, what you, you're able to control everything in the house. You're able to control the audio as well. You're not having to change interface, you're not having to change to the Sonos app, it gives you that integration. The beauty of it is, it actually gives you the integration behind the scenes as well. So you can, um, you know, with that all off, you can then control your Sonos um, very simply. It might be that the customer doesn't even use the X1 app to control Sonos, because the Sonos app does a good job, there's nothing wrong with it. But actually at an integration level, you're able to include those devices in your home control. Now, the one on the other side of the screen is the Basalt, um, the Basalt um, uh, um, Asano system uh, with the new Core Mini processor, where you're able to uh, take that a bit further. It's a device that communicates to the bus. It enables you to import your KNX project and you can control everything in your home. So again, you're able to control your lighting, your heating, your shading, your, your AC, all of that can happen. But it also offers a lot of music integration and enables you to control AV devices, including TVs and amplifiers and switches for distribution, um, HD distribution of, of video streams around the home. Um, it enables you to control all of those from that same controller. So you've got a very, very unified control. We're not having to move into the realm of an AV control system, we're able to do a kind of hybrid solution where we can control both. I think that's a really good place to start. You're not having to kind of retrain on a whole new control system that requires a, a completely different approach. You're actually able to take a KNX device that is natively controlling KNX and add the AV control onto it. And that control is very simple. That integration is very simple because well, there isn't really any. It's done from the same platform. You don't have to commission the two systems. You're already working with either of these solutions and you're adding AV control to it. So it's a very simple way to get into this, this kind of, this, this industry of, of integration. The next is native integration. And this is where we've got a AV control system that is controlling all the devices in the home. And we've got a separate KNX system. A lot of the control in the market, uh, a lot of the AV control, control systems in the market do offer this native integration. This example is from Control 4. Within the control, and these screenshots are from the Control 4 software. In this, for this to work, we've already commissioned KNX. We've already got the building control working um, and you, know, you push a button, the lights come on and we know all of that's commissioned and happening. And we've already commissioned the control system so you're able to sit down and use the, the remote to turn on the TV, fantastic. Um, now we want to link the two together. So we, uh, we tell the AV control system the IP address of the IP interface or the IP router. Um, different systems work at different levels, uh, use, use the different protocols to connect to the system. So we point it at the IP address and then all we need to do is let the AV control system know the, ob the group addresses we want to control. So in this example on the right, we've got a lighting control for a chandelier uh, and we've got a couple of group addresses there to, to set the level of the lighting. 
Uh, we've got the ability to get the feedback so the visualization up, um, stays up to date. We can use the raised lower KNX dimming um, telegram, the, the four bit telegram. And we've got the toggle, the on off, the, the switching command as well. So we're actually talking to KNX in the language that the KNX understands, group addresses and data points. So it's very, very simple to integrate the two. Now when we do this, there's two things to remember. One, we're going through the network. For the control four system, other systems like Savant and um, RTI and AMX will work in a similar way. And we're going through the network to link the two systems together. So the, the control system needs, the network needs to be working for the control system to be able to control KNX. So it's important that we consider the network as part of the controls. We need to make sure the network is reliable and stable. And most of the network gateways or the, the network that you would get from your normal internet service provider, they're designed for mass market, they're designed for consumers. They're, they don't actually operate at a level that we need when we're doing this level of control over it. So consider the network, make sure we've got reliable, stable networks, and really that we're using professional grade or commercial grade solutions in, in the residential environment, or even just upgrading to a, to a higher level of product. So number one, make sure the network works. The other one is make sure the two systems work independently. I've already said it, commission the KNX, commission the control four, commission the AV control commission them separately. So if something did happen, if one of the systems fails, it doesn't take out the other one. If one stops working, the other one still continues to work. That's really important. We're integrating the two systems. What we don't want to do is have a heavy reliance on back and forth communication that would prevent um, the whole home from working if, if something did happen to one of the systems. As reliable as either system is, we don't want to build in these fail points. So it's really important to keep them, se um, keep them separate. But systems that natively integrate are very easy to commission because all you really need to know is the group address. And it might be that the person doing the AV control is different to the person doing the KNX. Well, great, we just export the, the table of group addresses, we let them know where, you know, what controls what, and they're able to just type that in and off you go. Very simple type of integration. The final method is object integration. Now, this is where we add a device to our KNX system that translates from the KNX language to a common protocol, such as RESTful API, or it could be using JSON, JavaScript, object notation. Now, what that means is that the external control system, this is an example from Crestron, this is how Crestron advised to do it. The external control system doesn't need to talk to KNX. All it needs to do is talk to that dedicated device that we've added to the KNX system. The other thing we need to do is in the KNX system programming in ETS, we need to add the objects from each device, um, add the object from that dedicated device, from that proprietary device, um, to the group addresses we want to control. So instead of the AV natively controlling the um, uh, KNX and being able to just send that telegram, instead the um, AV control system is telling the object to turn on and then that object will send out onto the bus in the normal way. The benefit of doing it this way is that it's, it's, it's under control. You, you're only controlling certain things and the external system doesn't even need to, to, inter, to understand KNX. KNX isn't that hard to understand, but for some, some companies it's easier. They prefer to control it using a different protocol. The downside of it is it has to be programmed on both systems. The, the KNX systems integrator will need to program the objects into e each group address, which can make it harder to control, uh, well, not harder to control, but harder to make changes. Um, the other benefit of doing it this way, though, is that one device is responsible. So it's easy to disconnect that device and prove that either system works and we're not as reliant on the network. You are still, because the way that you'd be communicating to this device is via the network, it's just kind of adding another layer of check, checks to it. So all of them will offer the same level of functionality. You're able to integrate the different systems together to control two-way control. So, so functions from AV might be controlled on the keypad or on the KNX system, and functions from the KNX system may control the AV. So just a bit of a summary. So each of the systems, uh, KNX for building control and the AV integration, they cover different parts of the building. 
right? One of them's more of an infrastructure system, one of them's more the entertainment on top. They each have their own strengths. They each are designed in a certain way and they work in certain ways. And that's fantastic because they're not trying to compete with each other. They actually go really well together and they, they work in harmony. And that's where we can integrate them together to provide this more unified solution. Where from a customer, a customer experience point of view, the two systems act as one and respond as one. There's lots of different ways to integrate them together. And it's, it's, it's a case of speaking to your to the AV control system or getting in touch with a distributor or one of the, the technical, um, technical bodies in the industry and find out how that you can integrate them together in the best way of doing it. There's lots of different ways, but the key point is everything can be integrated together. There are so many different solutions to make this work. I think the final takeaway is there's a real opportunity to expand your business by offering both KNX and AV integration. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, if you want some more information about this, please uh, jump on our website, ivoryegg.com, and from there you can actually access a lot of information about KNX and other building control. Uh, we're going to have some questions now, so uh, if you've got any questions, hopefully you've been putting them in the live chat, and uh, we'll get into that now. Thank you, everyone.